So this is my dad, and he is retiring from ministry after spending over 40 years at the same church this Sunday. And last week I had the opportunity to go and pick through his library, and I got a handful of very specific things, and that's what I want to talk about with you today. So I'm Chad Brooks. I'm a pastor here in Louisiana. I make videos about the Bible, about the spiritual life, and the everyday going-ons of a pastor. And I want to talk to you about what books I got out of my dad's library last week. I've unpacked these three bins of books, and, and I did that earlier for a reason. Number one, the first bin, I didn't intend on getting full sets of anything from dad, but I saw a full set of an older NIV application commentary. It's like, okay, I do want that whole set, so this whole tub is just that. But what I really wanted when I was opening up this was to do a couple of things. One group of books I had a feeling were in there and I wanted, and then I saw something else as I was in there getting these books books. And I've realized also what the funny thing is, is as I've been going through these, you know, I look and I see that these books are not all just dad's books. Like dad did not buy these books all brand new. Some are pretty old. And if I go in here and I look, let me really tell you the story of this book right here. I found this. This is Bart's Epistle to the Romans. Kind of a classic old school text. And there's a name in the cover right there. John G. Alley, March of 1960. And that matters because John Alley was the pastor of my dad's church before my dad was the pastor. He came in, uh, like I said, I think 1971. Dad was hired in 78. He became the senior pastor in 2000 when John retired. So these books are not just dad's books. They're other pastor's books. And when I think about books, I also think about a legacy because we can really tell a story of who we are, what we believe, how we teach, all of those sorts of things through our books. And there's also something incredibly powerful when we pass books down to somebody else. That might be the reason I don't use logos, which I have, or accordance, which I also have, as a primary book depository thing because books tell a story. And know so much of my own journey, people always love to ask, hey, Chad, why are you United Methodist and your dad Southern Baptist? And I'll tell them it's because I could not find another church like my dad's. And I had to begin searching elsewhere because that church was so unique for what it believed and who it is. And I can see that in all of these books where about half of them say John G. Alley. So in many ways, these aren't dad's books. These are John's books that John gave dad and then dad gave me. And I've picked through John's books before in the past. I can pull down books off of my big shelf that were John's and some of them I use quite often. And so, you know, picking through books really is a legacy thing. Now, the two types of books I was looking for when I went in. Uh, number one, I was pleasantly surprised. You know, this whole big stack right here is all commentaries. I wasn't expecting to find many commentaries because my dad is not as an academic reader or as a thinker as I am. But I went in wanting to find one type of book, which I knew was in there, and then I found a second type that is really important to me. So the first type is this stack right here. I'm gonna move back behind there. And I've gotten these books before out of dad's library, and I think most of them belong to John. But these are books that we don't see people writing that much anymore. And what these are is, is these are books that are about personalities in the, in the Bible. And, and you can't call them biographies. You can't call them commentaries. You maybe can call them surveys, but they're about particular people in the scripture. So I have a couple on Jeremiah here and back there already. I've got a couple on Paul and I've got a couple on Jesus. And let me tell you, these are some of my favorite resources now when I'm teaching through like bigger pictures of scripture is really to understand this. And, and you know, in, in now books, we have guys like Ben Witherington and Craig Keener, they're doing socio-rhetorical commentaries where 
where some of this is being pulled in, but there is something about this, let's call them exegetical biographies, and people really aren't writing them anymore, and I love them. So I wanted to find more of those in there, and I did find some more of them in there, and I've got more stuff in the commentary stack that kind of bleeds the lines as well about that. Now, the other thing that I found, and I, I kind of suspected to see some of it in there, but I was surprised at how much is all of this huge stack right here, that these are either resources for word studies or they're specific exegetical looks at the Greek grammar for books of the Bible. I think, you know, in my own personal preaching practice, word study is just a really, really uh, big, important thing to me. And they used to do more books like these. We're not seeing like word study books come out as much. You know, I've got a Kittle up there, the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament. I've got my BDAG on accordance because it's that, that lexicon is just easier to use on accordance. Word study is something so enriching and so neat. And it's another category of these books that aren't really being published anymore. And I'll tell you, some of this kind of stuff you can find in church libraries like crazy. If you are in an older church that has a library or if you have a church book sale, those sorts of things, you know, you can pull in heavy. And what I'm excited about really is I've got two sets of things I've found here. So number one, um, or three sets. This set is called Untranslatable Riches of the Greek New Testament, then study of the vocabulary of the Greek New Testament, and then great truths to live by. So this is all word work, and it is all, you can't find that kind of stuff. Uh, it's just, it's not being thought about right now. Then right here is a whole set about commentary-ish, also grammatical look at um, the New Testament, and it's kind of in terms of the Greek language and the word study, but other things, uh, that's interesting. Like I said, people don't do those anymore. Um, you know, I found just a big dictionary of New Testament words. Those are always more, more helpful. And then I've got this huge big set, and this is a full set, of Robertson's word pictures in the New Testament. I'm really excited to dig into those and look into that. So big tubs of books. Hope you've enjoyed this kind of literal peek into this. This is also kind of like like niche library forming because I've got plenty of commentary resources behind me. I don't really need to expand that out unless someone does something that's just super critical in Old Testament or New Testament studies. But this is like my library version 3.0. And like I said, it's more interesting to go into older stuff. And this is why I like older books sometimes. I think it is important for us to not throw away and trash older resources and older commentaries because they help us understand how people thought and what was like the leading edge of, you know, a biblical exegesis, biblical exposition and biblical studies in those days, uh, because that helps us understand how we got to where we are now. So just because something is old, doesn't mean it's not useful. So I'm Chad. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments, do you look for certain kinds of books if you get to pick through somebody's library? And I'll be back with you in the next video.